Armored Core 6 has the hardest video game boss ever made that I've ever played. It took me 13 and a half hours to beat, spread across three days. And from what I'm hearing from friends, 13 hours is about average, middle of the road for this boss. Some are double that amount. Some are double that and then raged quit, threw their controllers across the room and smashed them. And they still haven't beat it. FromSoft loves to make people suffer. They did that with Elden Ring. So this is a story about pain, about suffering, about how I finally beat this MFR. This is a story about how Armored Core 6 nearly killed me. Heck, Metroid Dread bosses were easy compared to this. Hey everyone, I'm Clayton. Welcome to Clayton Plays. On this channel, we play a lot of retro games for the very first time, as well as some new titles as well. If you're into gaming, you're into having fun, then please subscribe. We're a friendly group over here. I read all of your comments as well, so drop me a comment below. All right, before we get to the boss fight, I need to set the stage here. This game is called Armored Core 6, Fires of Rubicon, the game that lets you play as a mech, building out your armored vehicle with guns and shields, boosters and rockets, whatever your little heart desires. This is a man's dream come true. It's like the video game version of BattleBots, but on steroids. There are 59 total missions spread across five different chapters. Oh, only five chapters, you say? You will be crying to your mama before the end of chapter one. Hey, mom! Because this game is insanely difficult. There are videos online of players rage quitting, smashing their controllers on the floor. This boss will punish you. I'm talking hands in arthritic claws difficult. Just look at my hands beforehand, and now look at them. That's real footage. I'd never played any Armored Core games before, and I was excited to jump in for the very first time because the hype train was strong for this one. Somehow this game is very accessible to a newbie like me. The controls are easy to learn, tons of fun to learn actually. When I learned that I could quick boost out of the way of enemy fire and then unleash a torrent of plasma gun blasts on them, I was flipping out. This is so much fun. They force you to do mech trainings in a Star Trek like holodeck in between missions in order to unlock important upgrades. There are also arena missions that aren't part of the core story, but rather are another way to push you into battling different kinds of mechs, sort of a, a veiled attempt at yet more training, a lot of fun. I love these trainings and I loved completing them to unlock important OST upgrades, allowing you to improve your mech overall. So it's a win-win for a newbie. You learn the game while also unlocking power and weapons upgrades. And boy, do you need them, because I'm gonna tell you right now, don't even attempt to fight the boss I'm about to show you if you haven't done these training upgrades. You'll need every ounce of power that you've got. There are a few bosses in Chapter 1 that made me want to cry, one in particular, but it doesn't hold a candle to the boss at the end of Chapter 2. I cannot overstate how hard this was, and I don't need to embellish at all, none. I want you to experience the entire pain with me, and finally, the ultimate satisfaction of destroying this boss in the most dramatic way possible. It was epic. Now the boss is named the Sea Spider. Yes, a giant mechanical sea spider that will destroy you with a barrage of energy weapons that rotate between concentrated bursts that are nearly impossible to avoid due to a, a hair pulling timing mechanic, and then a charge up beam that sweeps back and forth, ripping apart your armor. This thing can basically rip apart your armor in three hits and you're dead. And if that's not enough, he does two different giant stomping attacks that are crazy to try and avoid. Now, if you're too close, you'll get crushed. If you're too far away, you'll be destroyed by a barrage of energy weapons. Now, if you handle the wrong kind of weapon, you'll just ricochet off of him instead of actually scoring any direct hits. Not to mention that if you even barely graze his legs, you'll lose some hit points, you'll lose some AP. So I started out with an energy weapon configuration in my hands and pulse missiles on my back. This is the config that I used to great effect over the past few missions. It let me fire vertical plasma missiles into the air. They come raining down on armored targets, and I loved watching that happen. And the large plasma guns do enormous damage, so I thought this was a good way to go. In the early rounds, I saw that I was causing some damage, but uh, not enough. And I was like, wow, man, I really suck at this guy. So I'll just keep this config for now, and I'll keep learning his moves. And I just kept getting destroyed. over and over and then I would do really well and he would enter his second stage 
where he flies up into the air and he starts doing a spinning firing thing that rips you apart. And I was like, wow, okay, I got this far with this config. Let's keep it going, right? So it's just a little bit of a carrot showed me that I could actually progress to the second level with the config that I had. So it was enough of an encouragement. And then I'd start over again and battle him and say, okay, now I got it. And then suddenly it was like I'd forgotten everything I'd learned, right? I just got to the second stage of this boss and then I started over again and now I can't remember how I got there. And I was just getting destroyed over and over and over again, brutally. I later realized there was one big problem with this plasma gun front and shoulder setup. I didn't optimize my OST chips correctly. More on that in a second. So after another five hours on Saturday, I called it. My hands were like claws. I went to bed. Then Sunday arrives, day three of my battle. I spent the morning doing some work, editing some videos, and I knew that once I was done with my work, that sea spider was going to be crushed under my mech boot. Or was he? I started out the session on Sunday by going back and replaying some past missions in order to earn up some extra cash in order to build out a new mech. I bought some pteropod legs that would let me float in the air and do aerial damage. And I thought, okay, I'm also going to use some kinetic power here. So I bought some Gatling guns, set those up. Remember, each of these weapons either uses explosive power like grenade launchers and pile drivers or kinetic power like Gatling gun bullets or energy power like my previous plasma weapons. And then you can optimize the OST chips to really ramp up that damage ability. So I gave this new config a shot against the Sea Spider, and it went about as good as you can imagine. I just couldn't manage to focus on hitting him with bullets and then activating my floating technique, floating in the air with my pteropod legs, and then also trying to avoid his hellish attacks. I was not good at it. He just kept annihilating me again. After getting annihilated using my pteropod configuration, I literally put in Kirby in the Forgotten Land just to play a boss fight that I could actually win and feel better about myself. Yeah, that's how sad this got. So I went back to the drawing board again, changed up my legs. Instead of flying, I'll just boost to avoid. That's what I should be doing, right? Just boosting to avoid. And I used a combination of my assault armor which let me detonate an explosion right out of the gate, right at the start of the battle, then unleash a torrent of bullets. This seemed to be getting closer and closer to the mark. I was able to start using my Gatling gun and I was able to get to that second phase where he flies up into the air. But then I got stuck again. And in order to use those bullets in your Gatling gun, you need to be very close. Otherwise, the bullets will just ricochet off his armor, wasting your time. Back to the drawing board once again. <laughs> Each time I went back to the drawing board, I rejiggered my OST chips. I had to restart the level as well. So remember, this isn't as simple as just restarting right from the boss fight. No, no, no. You have to deal with all of the space lasers and getting across that giant bridge again and then finally getting to the boss. My final configuration took me back to the basics, back to my energy weapons, the VVC760PR, and I made sure my OST chips were fully maxed out for the energy weapon damage. And instead of pulse missiles, I put some laser cannons on my shoulders, the VP60LCS. These have some very nice long range. And my goal this time was to avoid as many double plasma attacks as possible that he hits you with and just spam the hell out of him from a slight distance, getting him into an overload phase and then pounding him with those laser cannons. And well, did it work? I felt myself getting closer, so I set up the camera and this happened. I couldn't believe I did it. I remember when I was a child, beating Mother Brain and Metroid was my greatest video game accomplishment. This takes the cake. This is the most difficult video game boss I've ever played, and it's only chapter two. Let's watch it again. Yes. The generator's going to explode. Oh my God. Brings a tear to my eye. You know what else brings a tear to my eye though? As I know there's going to be someone in the comments that says they beat the sea spider in three tries and didn't see a problem at all with it. And you, sir, are not a human being. You are a god among men. Thank you guys for subscribing. Now I'm going to go play some Kirby.